Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, I'm pleased to have a first-year head coach coming over from Crosby to be at the Waterbury Career Academy Spartans, taking over for my guy, Pete Flamia, who is now the vice principal of the Spartans, but taking over as a fine young coach who may not know a lot of people as far as people may not know him a lot yet, but they will over the course of this season and hopefully many seasons to come. Uh, Jonas uh, Russo, Coach Russo, great to be able to have you on the podcast. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me, Chris. Coach, I've heard a lot of great things about you from many of your former players at Crosby, one of them being Tanner uh, Leo, the quarterback, who is now uh, playing in college, Juco, and I know you were a major part of that, helping him get to that point, Coach. Um, before we get into, obviously, and there's a lot I want to get into in the short amount of time I have you, um, I also heard about your playing career and how you kind of really fought. I remember reading the article in the Rep Amp. You did special teams. You fought for that, and that kind of gave your, you know, it opened more doors for you. Just talk to me about that, Coach, because I feel like that's really inspiring. Um, yeah, that story, I need a book for it. But, um, but yeah, I went to Nassau Community College, um, you know, and when I went out there, I wasn't recruited. I wasn't anything of that nature. Um, I was actually, I actually dropped out of high school. I did not graduate high school until I was 21 years old. Then I moved down to Florida. And um, I spent uh, three years down in Florida. And, um, and then I realized that football was something that I really wanted to do. Um, I I played out there um, and, you know, eventually I came back, I came back home um, when I was 24 and I just walked on. There was a, there was a, uh, something in the newspaper and they said, um, what did they say? It, it, it was an announcement for the dates for tryouts. Uh, we walk, I, walk, I walked in, it, they had about two, 300 people in the bleachers to try out. And then we had, you know, the coaches spoke and then another 60 walked out the back room who were the actual returning players. So we kind of had an understanding of what it was early, right? Um, at this time, Nassau was like the premier Juco, right? Everybody and their mother wants to be there. I know to myself, I'm going to make it. Um, I just got to, I got to find a way. And, you know, for me, special teams became the way, you know, nobody wants to do it. Excellent. I got it. What's up? What we need to do? So got on the end. Um, I blocked about about eight punts that year. Uh, three, three or four of them were returned for touchdowns, um, and that just put that's what put me on the on the map on the radar. And then between that and practice, that's why I go so hard with the kids in practice. You know, we had a lot of D one bounce backs. We had a lot of um, uh, high school all Americans who didn't have the grades you know, from Florida, from Georgia, who had a sense of entitlement, right? So practice wasn't the, for me, it was, I'm, I'm, I'm killing you in practice. You know, I'm going to make sure that it's undeniable. And um, that's what it was. So when they had the kid from Michigan State, they just had to move him over to the, to the other side. When they had the kid from Virginia Tech, they, had, they actually had to get him up out of there, right? Um, because for me, it was once I get on this field, that's it. So um, you know, so I blocked the six, I blocked the, the six or eight kicks. The, um, the my first year, my second year, I got the opportunity at linebacker. Um, they they really had a kid from Delaware High School, all American kid. They really wanted to get this kid on the field really bad. So they thought that I would mess up. So the first game he played, he played versus Fordham, six seven tackles, three four loss. I'm in the newspaper. You're not gonna get me off the field. So, so it's me and a bounce back kid from Michigan State starting that linebacker. They want to get me off. They brought a kid from Virginia Tech in. He was the DN. Eventually, they came to me and said, listen, would you mind playing DN and moving the linebacker? Bro, it don't matter. As long as I'm on the field, I'm going to get to the football. And um, from that point forward, it was, it was kind of, it was unfair at that point. Um, you know, we kind of spoke about the signing earlier. Uh, that was, I was just out there. Um, uh, uh, causing havoc, and um, you know when the when the when the what is it, the recruits came, right? Um, only two of us got 
got Division I uh, uh, offers. The one who was at, what is that, Michigan State? And then, no, 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 the one that was at South Carolina. Um, he was the other DN. He was DN on one end, I was on the other. He, he got an offer and I got an offer. We were the only two that got the offer. And when the coaches came in and they would ask me like, all right, so which film you want me to put on? I said, put on any film. It don't matter which film you put on. You know, whichever one you put on, you're going to get a thousand percent me. You know, so um, that's been me. That's been my mentality like forever. I have the utmost confidence in myself and my abilities. Um, you know, and as a coach, it's, it's, it's the same way. You know, I make sure that, um, you know, my players feel that same way, that same energy. And, um, and, and that's just kind of, that's kind of where we are with it. And talk about, Coach, where you went as far as after you left Nassau. Mm -hmm. Where did you go after? Um, after I left Nassau, I went to the University of Maine. Um, I've, I, had, I had quite a few um, offers, quite a few um, CAA offers. But I had some other offers, some larger offers prior to that. Then I broke my ankle. So all of the 1A offers went away. And then all of the one double A office came in. And then that's when I found out about the CAA conference and mm -hmm. how they had the most players in the NFL and blah, blah, blah. And the University of Maine at the time had the most um, players, FCS players in the NFL at that time. And they had another guy who was about to go to, go to the league. And it, it was really me and him, Javon Belcher. He's the one who kind of recruited me you know, to be like, listen, man, I'm next. And then after that, you up. And that's really what, that's really what sold it for me. Um, that and the fact of me being kind of like far away. So away from the distraction, because even when I was at NASA, you know, at, you know, everybody home, you know, so it was a little different. So, you know, I went to, um, I went to U University of Maine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, it was a different experience than what was sold to me. And um, once again, even with the limited playing time, I, 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 still, I still was able to wreak havoc. Uh, we played Stony Brook, um, what was dubbed the Battle of the Butters um, uh, on ESPN. And uh, I had three sacks, four and a half tackles for loss and 10, and 10 overall tackles. And was the, uh, the 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 player of the week? Um, we go into the number four. We go into the next week playing the number one team in the country, which was Richmond, who won the um, they actually won the national championship that year. And I don't get any playing time. Um, so some things happen, and um, you know I found myself having to to, to find a new situation um, after that. My son, actually, my son was being born, but I just found out that I was having a son. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a, you know, up and down moment. I'm far away from family. Um, and uh, it, it just wasn't a family atmosphere. It was business. It was like, if you need to go home and do that, then there's not going to be a spot for you when you get back. And I said, all right, but, you know, uh, and, um, and that was just it, you know, but it, it, it was, it was business. It wasn't, you know, and for me, that's why even the way I coach now, everything's about family. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's, it's everything is built on that it's you know it's the business part of it I, I hated um I may have spoken to the head coach there a handful of times when you spoke to him you had to you had to make an appointment with the with the secretary I'm like bro what all right cool we off you know so it just you know and and to me it's not just about what you get it's about how you're going about getting it and um and it just it, it wasn't it wasn't a good fit it wasn't a good fit there. So um, from that point forward, I, I, I came back home. And then the next year, uh, that's when I transferred to uh, Stony Brook University. Um, and, you know, then I did what I, I needed to do there over the next two years, which was, which was a blessing. We won a, champ we won a, we won a um, Big South Championship two years in a row. Mm -hmm. um, first, first time ever. Um, and, um, you know, me along with a, a, quite a few other um transfers um, and, you know, a, a strong class that he had brought in a few years earlier who have now, were now seniors at that time. Mm -hmm. We really helped to, 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 to change the program to what it is today now, to be honest with you. 
you know, because prior to 09, nobody was really was really checking for Stony Brook. So, you know, uh, that's the one thing that I can say that I'm, I'm, I'm proud about is helping to be a part of that foundation to where it is today. Stony Brook has produced quite a, you know, a number of coaches. I know Coach Mel Rooney, who went to BU, Boston University, Boston College, actually, and then went to Stony Brook yourself, who now has, a, you know, a head coaching job with career. I mean, Stony Brook must really kind of prepare you as far as if you do want to coach. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> not, not for me, right? Um, so, yeah, that, you know, I mean – yeah, yeah, that Stony Brook had nothing to do with me, with me okay. Coach, okay. Uh, to be honest with you. I, I don't know who, other, you know, that might have been someone else's, you know, experience, but that wasn't, um, that part wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my experience. But I did meet some really great people there um, and things okay. of that nature. Um, but yeah, in terms of coaching. Mm -hmm. So at, at what point did you decide after you were done playing Stony Brook that maybe coaching was something for you? Like where you thought, hey, this is, I, I want to try this coaching thing. It looks like I could enjoy it. Uh, coaching wasn't for me because for me, my goal, you know, in 2010 was to be the first player drafted from Stony Brook. So when things didn't go that way, you know, and this is, these are things that people don't speak about, right? Like when you are in a top tier athlete and you, you are the person who's in, who's in the paper and, and that's being pushed to be, Oh, he's going to be this. He's going to be the first da, 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 X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, the lows, right? The lows that come after that. So I spent, you know, I spent a, a, a good portion of the next five to seven years trying to figure out my purpose, my like who 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 I was now that I wasn't a you know all everything um, football player. So um, it really, you know, the coaching wasn't really you know, in my, in my, um, my sites, mm -hmm. um, it was, it was a friend. It was a good friend of mine from high school who he kept on, kept on with it. Hey, bro, yo, we can use you back at our old school. And I, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. nah, yo, bro, we could use you back. Eh, no. And then, um, in 2016, I found myself, you know, out of teaching now. And um, and he had hit me one more time, like, bro, we got we got a kid who could really use you, you know. And um, and I said, I said, okay, you know. So I said, I'm gonna come. I said, I'm gonna come and watch the game, mm -hmm. yeah? because I I stopped watching. I have stopped watching football for a long time. I was very yeah. I, I stopped watching it for a long time. Um, if you know anything, uh, Javon Belcher actually made it to the league, played for the Kansas City Chiefs. And then, um, you know, he he actually ended up, you know, taking his life and the life of his girlfriend and things of that nature. Um, all of that stuff sat with me heavy. Um, so I was really cool off the game for a long, long time. Um, but when I got out there on that field on November, it was a playoff game. They they lost that game, and like the next week. I was I was I was in the locker room with them and it was it was go time from there. That was that was it. That was it. You know, it, it had it, it brought it brought the love back. You know, so um, mm -hmm. that's really what it is. And funny enough, he's the same. That same coach is the same one who kind of got me out here in Connecticut. He ended up we ended up coaching together. He was he's on my staff, my OC, um, when we was in Brooklyn. Things happen. He moves out here to Connecticut. And he starts coaching. He's actually now coaching at Maloney High School. And he's the, um, he was, he's like the, the freshman of JV coach and he coaches the running backs and stuff over there. And I end up moving out here during the COVID year. And the goal was for me to go up there and help him out. And that's where I was heading to until I realized, wait a minute, I live here in Crosby. Why would I be going out there? So um, let me, you know, let me go and check and see if I could, you know, um, what's the name? And um, I did. And, that, and, and that's kind of how that that whole thing um, panned out. It's crazy how they say everything happens for a reason, coach. And mm -hmm. even though there were, you know, there was a point, coach, where, like you mentioned with 
with Javon Belcher and just that whole situation. And, you know, you know, I know that he he's, he's gone and, you know, I, I do believe that he was watching you as far, maybe kind of giving you that extra push, like, Hey, go do this, go into coaching. Like you are made for this. And I just feel like maybe that's just me thinking a little bit crazy, but I do believe he's with you even to this day. I'm sure every career practice he's there right next to you. And I'm sure he's helping you every step of the way, you know, from, you know, being with the big guy up there. I definitely have a, um, a ton of angels around me for sure. That's the one thing that I can, that, that I, that I know to be a fact. So, you know, I definitely have quite a few around me. Coach, before we run out of time, I know I have you for a couple more minutes. Uh, you know, being hired at Career Academy is, you know, you're taking over for Pete Flamio, who I mentioned before is the vice president. He left a lot of talent for you as far as on the roster, left a good foundation. And I do believe that you are the right man to be able to continue this for what your morals are. You know, you talk about being, you know, a family guy, family person. The program is a family. And just I've seen your content. I've seen your stuff from afar. I love it, man. Uh, being around these kids. I mean, you know, you're seeing it firsthand. These kids respect adults. They love the game of football. And now you're taking it to the next level. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the one thing, you know, you, you're going to hear a lot. Of, I heard a lot of stuff about Waterbury and the kids here and the parents and X, Y, and Z. None of that's been the truth. But my experience here with the, with the family, that they're committed. They're committed to their children you know, getting a higher level of, um, of education. They're committed to, um, you know, this, this program, you know. So, um, you know, being here has been refreshing for me. You know, um, you know during so the, the summer um, training, like right, we've had, we, we, we have 30 kids on a regular basis that, that, that are in the weight room, that's working out, that's running and, you know, getting, that's getting better, that's committed to this, that's committed to this thing. So, um, you know, I feel like, I definitely feel like, you know, God has a plan and that um, he, he, he's already prepared me for this, for this um, situation that we have right now. And, and the one thing I know is that I'm ready and I know that we're going to be ready for sure. Talk to me about what, cause I know I, you know, I do expect to be broadcasting some career games as far as for the radio. What can I be expecting for this season? Um, you're this gonna, well, you're definitely going to see, um, a, a lot of talent on the field, but you're going to see a disciplined uh, and structured um, team. Right? You're going to see kids flying around. Um, you're going to see kids who know what they're doing. Um, and you're going to see kids who are excited to play the game. Um, you know, it's going to be, and, and you're going to see a lot of physicality. We're, go we're going to be a physical team. Like there's no, there's no doubt about it. You don't get on my field if you're not going to be physical. So um, if, you know, anybody in the nonviolent league feels like we're going to be out here, you know, patty caking around. It's going to be a long season for y'all, I promise you that. Well, I can tell you right now, you're definitely going to need that aggression when you're going up against the running back from Wilby, who is built like a tank. I think you know who I'm talking about. You need to, you know, I'm not saying you need to, like, be violent, actually violent towards him, but you, you're going to have to hit that young man because he's got some legs the size of my house. They're huge. <laughs> No, that's a fact, and that's the. But that's what this game is predicated on, right? It's predicated on violence. It's not. It's not. A, you know, like you have to be violent. You have to be physical, and you have to have. You know, you have to have a, a strong mentality. And I feel like I feel like we have that. You know, so, um, you know, they're they're gonna have to worry about our our guys too. We got we got a back as well who's gonna be who's gonna be tough. So, um, you know, look, listen, man. I hear what everybody talking about with everybody else, and that's and that's cool. For me, the only thing that I worry about is here at career, you know, and, and, and what we have going on because it's special. You know, that's the one thing that I can say about this place. This place is special, right? Like we can't, we don't get, people can't transfer into our school. We can't come from this school and that school and come, and come to our school. Only way you get in is you get in from your eighth grade and you come to the ninth and you come through. That brings a, 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 a bond, a, a familiar aspect to it that, you know, you, you're not going to get everywhere. So, like, we, we definitely had a, a special place. But we can be at. And there's two players that I really am looking forward to seeing. And I know there's many, many others. But the two that I can remember who – and I've always believed when I'm broadcasting games or if I'm watching TV, if I'm watching a college game, high school game, if a player jumps off and really kind of catches my eye, I'm watching that player. 
And mm-hmm. I'm talking about Desani Yates and Jordan Williams. Jordan mm-hmm. Williams, the cornerback, Desani Yates on the end. You and I were talking about Yates. Mm-hmm. Those two young men just jump out to me. Williams is a small kid, but like I was telling you, if he was a couple inches taller, he's a Division One kid because he's got that motor like you. He mm-hmm. has that. And then Yates, again, just like you, the way that he is able to, you know, he, he's like a very raw clay. But, in you know, to mold him, he could be anything. You could dream of him being – Literally anything. Um, is 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 gonna be, is gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun this year. You know, um, you know, we're putting we're, those guys are putting in the work for sure, and um, and their football IQ is rising, uh, and that's what's gonna make them scary because now now along with their their athletic ability, they mm-hmm. also are now gonna be able to dissect you know, offenses and their formations and their splits and so on and so forth. So um, it's going to be scary to watch those kids play this year. For sure, Coach. But, Coach, I could talk to you forever. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I really do appreciate you coming on the podcast. It was a lot of fun to be able to hear about what you've gone through all the way to this point, and I really do believe it's something that I think years down the road will definitely be, like you said, a story that should be written. Uh, Mm -hmm. Coach, once again, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, I appreciate it. And like I told you off the air, I appreciate you and everything that you're doing out here in MBL with the podcast and broadcasting the games and things of that nature. And I'm providing your time and energy. Uh, the love is, is needed. And, you know, I just want to make sure that you got your flowers, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll give those flowers to now my fiance because she needs them a little more than me. For sure. <laughs> but I'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. The Maricity stands with Connecticut Town. I'm going to find them all. Good Thursday, everybody, and be well.